सो टुडे माय टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज द कैंडिडियासिस इन माय फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन माइकोलॉजी आई हैव डिस्क्राइब्ड अबाउट वेरियस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द फंगाई वेयर आई आल्सो डिस्क्राइब्ड द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सिस्टेमिक क्लासिफिकेशन इन विच देयर वाज फोर क्लासेस ऑफ द फंगाई सो दोस फोर क्लासेस वेयर द सुपरफिशियल माइकोसिस सबक्यूटेनियस माइकोसिस सिस्टेमिक माइकोसिस एंड द ऑपर्चुनिस्टिक माइकोसिस नाउ out of all these all those four classes i have described all of them except the opportunistic mycosis so we are done with the superficial mycosis the subcutaneous mycosis and the systemic mycosis till now now we are left with only the opportunistic mycosis now in the opportun opportunistic mycosis we have the most important fungi that is the candida which causes the candidiasis so first we will talk about the candidiasis and there are some more opportunistic mycosis which are important so we will discuss uh, those in sequence so talking about the candidiasis so candidiasis is caused by candida okay that is a yeast like fungus that you all know from the first lecture on the general mycology so candida is a yeast like fungus now there are different species of the candida which are infectious or which can cause the candidiasis those uh, pathogenic species you should remember the names of those species those species are the candida albicans candida glabrata Candida cruzei, Candida dublinensis, and Candida biswanathi. So these are some of the important species of the Candida which causes the Candidiasis. There are other many species also, but you should confine to these only because these are important. Other important Candida are also there, but uh, you should restrict yourself. Okay, at the UG level. Now we uh, we know that the Candidiasis is a opportunistic mycosis. Now why it is called opportunistic? Opportunistic mean. Uh, opportunistic means that the infection if occurs in a patient who is immunocompromised okay so if any infection occurs in a patient who is immunocompromised that is called as a opportunistic infection similar is the case with the candidiasis so here the whenever there is immunocompromised state then the candida very easily invades that person and cause the candidiasis that's why the candidiasis is called as a opportunistic mycosis now there are several risk factors for the candidiasis to occur you can easily remember those risk factors by a simple mnemonic of a b c d so let's see how you can remember that so here we have a a for age then b b for the broad spectrum antibiotics use then c c for the corticosteroid therapy and then d d for the decreased immunity plus the diabetes mellitus both of them uh, decreases the immunity of a person is how does age uh is how does age act as a risk factor for the candidiasis because the extremes of age at the extremes of age the immunity itself is going to decrease okay so that's why there is increased risk of candidiasis because immunity is decreasing so the risk will increase then broad spectrum antibiotics this broad spectrum antibiotics so those patients who are taking this broad spectrum antibiotics on a large scale their uh, normal uh, flora will decrease okay under the influence of those broad spectrum antibiotics and those uh, decreasing amount of uh, the normal flora in the body of that person will uh, uh, will predispose to predispose those patients to the further opportunistic infection so that's why in them also there will be decreased uh, immune status and that will uh, lead them to the candidiasis infection the second is the, the th sorry the third is the corticosteroid therapy so corticosteroid uh, also decreases the immunity if you have read about read in the uh, uh, read the pharmacology where the complete description of the corticosteroids is given there it is very uh, clearly mentioned that the corticosteroids decrease the immunity they decrease both the movement of the lymphocytes and neutrophils to the site of the infection also they decrease in various ways they decrease the immunity so so they decrease the wbc's number and the migration as well so in that way they also uh, they are also decreasing the immunity of a person and that's why they are predisposing to the candidiasis infection the number fourth reason is the decreased immunity as we are talking about right from the beginning that the decreased immunity is the cause for the candidate i mean that is a risk factor for the candidiasis cause is the candida albicans of course so the decreased immunity if a person is taking immunosuppressive drugs if uh, if there is organ transplant you know that the organ transplant patients are given the immunosuppressive drugs to prevent the graft rejection so they are also uh, immunocompromised plus the malignancy malignancy itself decreases the immunity and then hiv infection hiv infection decreases the cd4 count so all of these conditions are 
the immunocompromised conditions so in these conditions there is decreased immunity and hence they are predisposed to the infection of the candidiasis that's why they are the risk factors plus the diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus also reduces the immunity in a person and uh, thereby predisposed to the candidiasis infection so that's how these all factors act as a risk factor for the candidiasis infection now let's talk about all the infections which are caused by the candida so there are different infections which are caused by the candid candida which can uh, which can be classified in these three points so the invasive candidiasis okay the invasive candidiasis invasive candidiasis means candida is very invasively causing infection that means it has uh, even it is causing uti then that is an invasive infection then when when it is causing the candidial meningitis that is an invasive infection when it is present in blood causing septicemia that is an invasive infection when it is causing osteomyelitis that is an invasive and when it is when it is causing the pulmonary candidiasis that is also an invasive infection so these are the invasive candidiasis infections which can be caused by the candida albicans now the mucosal the mucosal candidiasis is also very common rather this is very commonly seen in the children you uh, if you have been in the pediatric wards any time then you have must have seen the oral thrush in the in those uh, pediatric age group of children like uh, the neonates and the uh, under 2 years of age children so they commonly present with this oral thrush they have uh, uh, you know they have some cardy material in their mouth uh, paint i mean mouth looks like painted with some curd like material white is totally white is material so that is called as the oral thrush that is caused by the candida infection okay that is also called as the oropharyngeal candidiasis and it's also seen in the elderly people plus the cutaneous candidiasis okay cutaneous candidiasis means infection of the nails infection of the skins by the candida so these are the different range of infections uh, by the candida albicans or the other species of the candida okay so these infections can be caused by the candida now talking about the lab diagnosis how will you diagnose the candida infection in the laboratory so first of course you have to collect the specimen so first point is the specimen collection so in the specimen collection depending on the site of infection you have to collect the specimen like if it is uti then you you will collect the urine sample midstream urine okay early morning then if it is meningitis then you will collect this esf if it is septicemia you will collect blood if it is osteomyelitis then you will collect the pus and if it is pulmonary candidiasis then of course you are going to collect the sputum if it is oral thrush then you will take the uh, swab from that part of the uh, oral thrush okay if it is uh, nail infection or skin infection then you will take the skin uh, you know skin uh, biopsies i mean skin clippings yeah, or nail clippings or the part of the skin which is getting infected by the candidiasis so depending on the site of the infection you will get the uh, specimen collected after collecting the specimen you have got different methods of detecting the candida infection uh, the first of which is the direct microscopy so we'll take the sample and will fix and you will fix it on the glass slide and after glass uh, fixing you will do the gram staining after gram staining what you will be able to see is the gram positive oval budding yeast cells budding yeast cells okay with the pseudo hyphae with the pseudo hyphae so this is the complete description uh, in the case of the candida what you see after gram staining over a glass slide okay so uh, you will see something like this the candida pictures looks like this uh, under the microscope these all are the uh, individual candida these all are the individual candida all all are the yeast like yeast cells okay and they have pseudo hyphae why pseudo hyphae you know the hyphae looks like com uh, i mean uh, in the hyphae there is a septa okay there is no constriction at the site of the uh, at the site of the septa but in pseudo hyphae there is constriction at the site of the septa see here see here this is the septa and here it is constriction but at this point there is no constriction at the point of the septa so this is the most important point to distinguish between the pseudo hyphae and the hyphae so pseudo hyphae is seen in the case of the budding yeast cells uh, that is the candida and hyphae you know uh, the uh, organisms we saw the hyphae okay a septate or the septate hyphae i have talked described earlier also so i'm not going in detail of that but here you should remember that candida produces the pseudo hyphae but 
one very important mcq here is the which of which of the following uh, candida do not uh, or does not show this type of character this budding is cell with pseudo hyphae so that is the can candida glabrata please remember this that the candida glabrata candida glabrata does not show these pseudo hyphae and the budding is cell on glass slide okay on after gram staining so this is a very important uh, uh, mcq point here that all these species are showing this type of pattern but only the candida glabrata is the species that is not showing this pattern okay so please keep this in mind after that after the direct uh, microscopy what you can do is the culture so we all know that the for the culture of the fungi we use the sabobrod dextrose agar sba and we incubate it at the 37 degree centigrade because it is not a dimorphic fungi that you are, you will be uh, you know you will be uh, incubating at 25 and 37 degree centigrade this is not dimorphic so you will incubate it only at the 37 degree centigrade after incubation so uh, the blood blood which is collect uh, blood which has been collected that is inoculated into the blood culture bottles that is the uh, in the uh, back tea and the alert machine so uh, after that you have to incubate it for 48 hours so after incubation you will see the colony characteristics colony characteristics so what is the finding in the colony characteristics the colonies appear creamy white smooth and with some odor okay so there is this characteristic of the uh, candida so this characteristic will itself help you in the uh, getting a clue about the candida if there is creamy white smooth uh, colonies looking like curd then that is uh, indicative towards the candida infection next is the gram staining from the colony so of course you will take the uh, some you know uh, some colonies and you will make a smear over a glass slide and you will see that there is and you will see that there is similar pattern of seen that is the gram positive oval budding is cell with pseudo hyphae again here is the uh, exception that is the candida glabrata that is for all after that after getting that uh, after uh, knowing that it is a uh, candida you have to identify the species also na you have to identify the species now there are different tests for identification of the species like we have got the germ tube test the first test is the germ tube test and that is the most important test in this species identification portion of the lab diagnosis this is the most important test this is asked in vivas also and this is asked in um, uh, university exams also it's as a separate question it may be asked as a short short answer question so uh, please remember this germ tube test and its interpretation this is very important so in the germ tube test that is also called as the reynolds broad phenomenon the reynolds broad phenomenon so here the colony is mixed with the human serum you will take the colony from that uh, uh, growth and you will mix it with the human serum and then you will incubate it for 2 hours and then you will prepare the weight mount from that weight mount from that uh, uh, preparation so you have uh, you have this test tube okay you have this test tube you have uh, in that you have taken the human serum so suppose this is the human serum here and you mix the you mix your colonies you mix your colonies in that you mix your colonies here and you leave it for leave it incubate it for 2 hours after that you take this sample from here you take this sample take uh, out the sample from here suppose uh, yeah you take out the sample from here and you make a weight mount over a glass slide so this is the glass glass slide you are making a weight mount over here you are making a weight mount over here and then you will see this under the microscope then you will examine it under the microscope so what do you see there you will be able to see there this this pattern is seen there under the microscope this is called as the germ tube this is called as the germ tube and how you, how can you describe the germ tube this germ tube can be described as a long tube like projection from the yeast cell so this small uh, sorry this this small globular part is the yeast cell and this elongated portion here you, which you can see this elongated portion is the tube okay so you can uh, you will be able to see the germ tube and when this germ tube is seen 
that means the germ tube test is positive that means the germ tube test is positive now what is the in inference from this test the inference is that if the germ tube is found to be seen i mean it is found there uh, on the microscope then you can confirmly say that this is candida albicans because this test is specific for candida albicans species which is also the most common species by the way other than that you can also get this test positive in the candida dubliniensis okay candida dubliniensis so this candida dubliniensis is going to create some troubles for you okay so please remember that uh, again this becomes uh, mcq point as well so candida dubliniensis can also show the germ tube test positive but uh, you if you are asked that uh, the germ tube is test germ tube test is positive then what should be the most probable organism it is the candida albicans it is the candida albicans after that you can do the dalmau plate culture okay you can do the dalmau plate culture what is done in that so that is a culture on the corn meal agar so dalmau plate culture means the culture on the culture on the corn meal agar culture on the corn meal agar agar and uh, there after culturing on the corn meal agar you will be able to see the chlamydospores chlamydospores which are thick walled and again this is positive for candida albicans so if you are able to see the chlamydospores or uh, uh, if if you are able to see that the chlamydospores are formed over that corn meal agar that means the candida albicans is the is causative species is the causative species or the causative organisms but again here the candida dubliniensis is present to trouble you that means this test is this dalmau plate culture is also positive for candida dubliniensis okay so it is also positive for candida dubliniensis so it is not leaving your back okay so it is going hand in hand with the candida albicans but that can be differentiated with the chrome agar with the carbohydrate fermentation test because here all of them will give uh, uh, both of them will give the different results rather all the species of the candida will give different species and different uh, you know uh, results in the chrome agar and the carbohydrate fermentation test further they can also be uh, differentiated by the automated system like the malditoff and the vitex so talking about the chrome agar in the chrome agar there is a plate and there are multiple classes like this i mean multiple divisions are made like this and when the candida uh, i mean the suspected candida uh, specimen is plated uh, i mean is inoculated over this over over this uh, agar over this you know uh, chrome agar then different colors are produced in different segments okay different colors are produced and based on the color you can identify that which candida species is that is the infective species okay in that specimen so uh, this chrome agar is also a very important and a very useful method to identify the species so see here i have written also different candida produce different colors on inoculating on the chrome agar so based on the color the species can be identified because we know already that which candida will produce which type of color so based on that you, uh, if uh, we can identify the species also okay next what we have is the carbohydrate fermentation test the carbohydrate fermentation test is that uh, the different uh, species of the candida will ferment the carbohydrate in different ways that means they will produce different acids and different gases etc so based on that you can also identify the species of the candida and of course we have the uh, automated system always the malditoff and the vitex to identify the species and uh, molecular method is also there so molecular method is the best method for differentiation and identification of species where we use the pcr okay so because it is done at the genetic level uh, the differentiation is done at the genetic level so it is most specific and the best okay that means there uh, there should not be in there will not be any fault in uh, this results in the molecular method results okay uh, after that we have got the this uh, last uh, investigation or uh, the last test that is the beta d glucan assay that is important uh, because uh, the beta d glucan uh, antigen that is elevated in the that is remains elevated in invasive infections by fungi so all the in fungi infections which are invasive in nature in those cases you will find the beta d glucan antigen in the blood so it is in simple words if you say it is a marker of all the invasive fungal infections 
but here you should remember three exceptions which are most important from exam point of view from mcq point of view that is the jbc jbc that is the zygomycosis blastomycosis and cryptococcosis so in these three invasive infections you will not get the beta d glucan antigen in the blood you will not get the beta d glucan antigen rather uh, sorry other than these uh, uh, three invasive fungal infection in all other invasive fungal infection you will get the beta d glucan antigen elevated in the blood so this is the all about the uh, fungal infection uh, that is the uh, uh, candidiasis which is causes the opportunistic infection so uh, this candidiasis is a uh, important question from ex in exam point of view from the university exams and uh, this is most commonly asked as a short note but can be asked as a short answer question as well because multiple questions can be framed from this topic so this is all about the candidiasis